Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to take a very quick look at the recent changes in Clean Flight and also mention a couple of changes in Clean Flight Configurator. Now, we did one of these videos back for 1.13 and it was very well received, and there's been a couple of requests recently to talk about what's changed in 1.14. In fact, it's just been revised to 1.14.1 yesterday. Actually, I think there was a problem with mag hold that had to be sorted. So, for the, the purposes of this video, I'm going to call it 1.14 because calling it 1.14 see I can't say it 1.14.1 is just a bit of a mouthful so what we'll do is have a look at the configurator first then we'll talk about the different changes and what's going on in here I'll show you a cool way to find out what's behind some of these single lines where it says FC changes so for example horizon mode we'll cover in a minute has a whole load of stuff that's changed on it and we'll cover that as part of the video and then finally, we'll take a little look at some new hardware from Seriously Pro, which is from Hydra, the, this chap here that's releasing Clean Flight. And that's one of the big reasons why we have a new version of Clean Flight around. So before we go into the details of Clean Flight, let's talk about the Clean Flight configurator. It has been revised recently. I was building a quadcopter a couple of days ago and got completely stuck for 20 minutes because I couldn't find where I needed to configure SBUS for the receiver. Now SBUS and receiver settings and things like that are typically used to be under the configuration tab. Now the configuration tab is getting bigger and bigger as time goes by. Those kind of settings for SBUS or satellite receivers, PWM, PPM, all that goodness is now underneath the standard stuff that you normally get when you open the radio tab. Now that actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it, but if you're like me and you're used to navigating the clean flight interface and you've been doing that for a couple of years, to suddenly find that's moved was a bit of a shock. I wouldn't be surprised if we also start to see other things moving around, things like VBAT move off the configuration page and move into the battery and power tab as well. So keep your eyes open for that so you don't get caught out like I did where you spend 20 minutes desperately trying to figure out why the new flight controller isn't being shown in clean flight as all the others you've ever tried. So back to 1.14.1, uh, here are all the changes that has gone on. Uh, the majority of the things that have happened in 1.14 is to support the on-screen displays. Now interestingly, the on-screen displays that 1.14 is talking about isn't the stuff that a lot of the flight controllers are being shipped with right now. In the next couple of weeks, we'll start to look at a lot of F3 based flight controllers and actually an F4 based one as well that have an integrated on screen display. And what those flight controllers actually are, are a Minim OSD and a flight controller and all those components are fit on one PCB. That's fantastic for making a quadcopter easy to wire up. You don't have lots of boards and extra wires, but you still have to talk to the flight controller with something like clean flight, beta flight, whatever you're using, and then you have to connect and talk to the on-screen display separately with the graphical user interface that used to configure whatever the Minim OSD is running, KV team, or those kind of things as well. We've done loads with Minim OSD boards, adding them to seriously Pro F3s and other flight controllers on the channel. So those of you that have been with us a while will know an awful lot about Minim OSD and how flexible it is. But that's not what this is talking around. What this is talking about is a new generation of on-screen displays, the first of which is this one from Seriously Pro. So we actually have ours here and we're going to use it in a future build and see how it actually performs. But this still has the same Max 7456 chip that you'll find on most on-screen display boards but the code that's driving it is all integrated into clean flight so you can configure everything with the clean flight GUI you don't have to have a separate interface or a separate control for those parts of the board so that's the big change it's a completely new implementation using the max chip of an on-screen display that you can configure through the clean flight interface as well as that there's a number of flight controller changes we've got some improved flight performance stuff there's an updated horizon mode. Uh, when it says see docs, what it's actually doing is referring you to this. It would be really handy if in future they actually put the URL that you could click onto it, but I'll show you how to find this stuff. I'll put again, I'll put the link in the description so you can find it. So your way you get to this is you go to the main part of the clean flight or whatever project it is you're looking at and you look at pull requests 
in pull request, you can actually click on milestones. Milestones will give you all of the different versions. So look, here's the stuff that's going on for future versions as well. You can be a bit sneaky and you can have a look what's going on. And if you click on 1.14, then you don't get anything at all until you click on closed. Click on closed and scroll down. Here's all the new things that were changed that we're just going to talk about. So anything in this list that you're interested in, if you go into the milestones and have a look at it, all the information is in here about what's actually been going on. So here's the horizon mode. So horizon mode, the short, I'm not going to read all this out. You can do that if you really fancy it. Again, I'll put the link in the description. What this means is that horizon mode now has two settings safe and expert. Safe is leveling always active when sticks are centered. So if you're using horizon mode and you use the angle self level part of it a lot, then you probably want it on safe mode. Expert leveling can be totally off when inverted. So if you're doing lots of hang time and loops and things like that in horizon mode, you probably want to set it in expert. So that's horizon mode. There's all new gyro sync code. So the gyro sync code uh, was something that was implemented in beta flight a while ago and then kind of turned off. And that was because a lot of flight controller boards didn't implement a couple of lines from the gyro that allowed beta flight to use the sync code properly. What uh, clean flight has done is they've added the sync code back into those targets for those boards that have implemented the gyro properly. There's also a new gyro PID task separation to allow gyro filtering. Basically, that just means it's a much more efficient process and way of doing it. There are two separate processes running and they're uh, making sure that whenever a gyro needs reading, it's getting read. The notch filter has come across from beta flight. Hey! The notch filter is something that's been around for a while. For those of you that have been living in a cave that haven't heard of it, what the notch filter does, it allows you to selectively tell the flight controller to ignore a range of vibrations and frequencies that it's detecting through its sensors. And those are typically the ones that you're getting from the frame, the vibration from the motors, the props, the wash, whatever it is, you can tell the flight controller, ignore all that because that's just noise. And then what the flight controller hears is actually the data it needs to fly your quadcopter. There's also iBus telemetry being added as well. So for those of us who use FlySky radios, that is now available, which is a great addition. There's a number of various smart port FR Sky telemetry changes and fixes. Now there's a load of really exciting stuff going on with smart port and FR Sky telemetry in OpenTX 2.2 that hopefully will be out soon. Uh, the basic implementation for smart port in clean flight hasn't really been bad. So there's not that much to change, but there's been a couple of tweaks in here. The big change for OpenTX 2.2 is that the telemetry will be really two way. So that will allow you to do some pretty cool stuff like potentially from a Lua script on your radio, you could actually access the settings of your flight controller live at the field and you can change things around without having to hook up your flight controller to a PC and use a configurator interface. Other cool things that will also be available when we have OpenTX 2.2 is the ability to configure things like the S6R. The S6R is something we're testing here at the moment. That is a FR Sky receiver and a three access gyroscope as well. It's for stabilizing planes typically. We have been goofing around with it a little bit and I'm quite impressed with it. At the moment we're having to use the PC configurator, but when OpenTX 2.2 comes out with that true bi-directional connection up to the craft, it'll mean that through a Lua script you'll also be able to configure this little guy in the same way. So OpenTX 2.2, keep your eyes open for that. That's going to be a pretty big deal and a bit of a game changer. Again, we have various new target supports and updates. Lots of new boards are being added. A couple of things for the flight controller OSD changes. So in summary, 1.14 is mainly about the on-screen display, but there have been a couple of cool little changes too. If you're interested in knowing what these changes actually are, then hopefully now you know where to go to read up about it to actually find out exactly what's going on. And finally, the on-screen display that 1.14 is talking about isn't the standard minim OSD implementation that we've been using historically. This is using the Max chip in a very different way with a brand new code base that will allow you to do everything, all the configuration, through one interface. 
So hopefully that helps highlight the really cool stuff that's in version 1.4 of this. I was speaking to Dominic earlier this morning. He's going to be at the drone show this year. So that's on the 3rd and 4th of December at the NEC in Birmingham. I think he's going to be on the Temtech stand. So if you're interested in going to see Mr. Clean Flight himself, he's going to be there. And from what I understand, he's also going to have the first sets of some brand new board technology he's been working on that even I haven't seen. Hopefully that helps those of you that have seen 1.14 come out. Hopefully now it explains a little bit about what's going on behind some of these changes. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.